Welcome to the Thursday edition of the Spark Creativity Teacher Podcast, a podcast for English teachers in search of creative teaching strategies. Whether you're new to this show or a longtime listener, I'm so glad you're here for today's edition of Highly Recommended. Today, let's talk about Ken Liu's short story, The Paper Menagerie, one of the best I've ever read. Hey there, real quick before we jump in, if you're listening to this live and you haven't joined us inside the lighthouse yet, I just want to remind you that the doors are open this week for two more days. If you'd like a smoother path to summer, let me help you plan your way to graduation. Over 800 creative teachers are already inside the lighthouse using hundreds of adaptable projects, lessons, and units to stop planning from scratch and say no to the overwhelm. I know signing up for a membership can feel intimidating. I've hovered over plenty of join buttons myself, so that's why this week, for two more days, you can test the waters through a special $1 trial. Yes, I'm pretty much offering you my life's work for $1, but honestly, that's how confident I am that once you're inside the lighthouse, you're going to be breathing a big old sigh of relief and setting up camp to stay. To learn more and take advantage of a couple more days of opportunity, just follow the link in the show notes or be sure to open my emails this week. The Paper Menagerie might be the best I've ever read, and it's also the only sci-fi short story I've ever read. It actually won all three of the major sci-fi awards, the Hugo Award, the Nebula Award, and the World Fantasy Award. So you know that in the sci-fi genre, it's thought of very highly. It can bring a new genre to your short story unit. It could add a layer to your sci-fi unit, or it would fit right in with any unit on coming of age or the American dream. The other nice thing about the Paper Menagerie is it's available in full text on the Gizmodo website if you aren't able to get Ken Liu's book right at this time. I just reread it, and maybe you can hear it in my voice. As usual, it had me crying. I made a little puddle on my desk here. It's a very emotional story. It's a very beautiful sad story. It's both a story of a boy and of his mother. There are separate stories, the way their stories intertwine, how they understand each other, how they don't understand each other. The boy's mother comes from China. She speaks no English when she arrives in the United States to marry his father. And, um, you know, the story starts when he's very young. As he grows up, His mother makes him these beautiful origami animals, and she is actually able to bring them to life for him. And that's where the kind of sci-fi element comes in. And it really feels unusual because in many ways, the story is very realistic. It feels, um, you know, it it feels like a coming of age story and a a story of um, American identity and struggle. And yet it has these tiny, beautiful paper animals that play with the boy, and that just feels like part of reality. The the little boy loves these animals. He's got, in particular, a little tiger that's like his best friend. And um, at first, he just thinks his toys are so much better than other toys, right? His toys are actually alive. But then there's this pivotal day where he makes friends with a little neighbor boy who has a an Obi-Wan Kenobi figurine and the the figurine has all these little plastic details and it has a lightsaber and the the neighbor thinks this toy is amazing. And when the little boy and his tiger don't think that Obi-Wan Kenobi is so amazing. They get into a huge fight, and it really affects the boy. Um, It really changes his path and the way he sees his animals and the way he sees his mother and the way he sees his identity as part of America. And this terrible interaction with this boy that leads to more terrible interactions at school kind of propels him on this journey in which he, he kind of leaves his his animals, his heritage on his mother's side behind and becomes very focused on fitting in um, with the way this neighbor boy has made him see um, American identity. So I don't want to spoil the rest of this story for you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you the ending in full, but years later, 
he discovers more about his mother, much more about his mother, written into the pages of his paper animals. So he finds them many years later as an adult, and he finds that when he unfolds them, her writing is inside, and he can't read it. It's in Chinese, and he's kind of left Chinese behind, but he has it translated out loud to him. And listening to his mother's words and her story um, is how the short story finishes. It's a very powerful, heart wrenching ending, um, <laughs> and it's it's an ending that always leaves me crying. Um, but it always leaves me with the renewed feeling that it truly is one of the best stories, short stories that I've ever read. Honestly, the Paper Menagerie by Ken Liu is powerful. It's painful. It's lovely. It's literary. It's an amazing short story. So this week, I highly recommend you follow the link in the show notes and read it for yourself because I really think you're going to want to use it in class.